Welcome to the most incredible aerial extravaganza ever. And it's all up in the air. It's 100 years since the Wright brothers' first flight, and we thought we'd do something even more daring. The challenge is to build an antique aircraft, which they must launch and fly here in the Mojave Desert in California. And as if that's not tricky enough, the teams can only use period junk and must wield the tools of the time. That time was a hundred years ago. In November 1903 at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, two brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright, managed to get in the air for 12 seconds. That 12 seconds changed the world. This was the culmination of a concentrated international effort to be first in the skies. Across the world, madcap inventors had come up with all sorts of weird and wonderful contraptions. The British, and the French were among the front runners, but it was the Americans who were first over the finish line. We've decided to rerun that race for flight and have gathered three international teams of extraordinary aircraft experts. First up, representing their queen and country are the brave British buzzards, four flight fanatics from Marlborough, England. My name's Bill Brooks. I'm captain of the British team. He's got all the brilliant ideas. What can you say about Bill, the mad scientist? Darren's a very accomplished hang glider pilot. I fly, and I don't quite know why I do it. I think it's genetically pre-programmed. Wendy always rises to any challenge. And I'm going to be the bossy one, because men being men, they tend to faff. My name's Ian Evans. I've had a love of flying since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. I think that he'll keep up a good sense of humor even when things get difficult. We're ready for anything. Also from across the Atlantic, connoisseurs of junk, the French Falcons. Je m'appelle Gérald Lafage et je suis le capitaine de l'équipe française. Gérald has built many flying machines and he flies them every day. Eric is a great pilot. He likes to be in control. I'm really excited about flying this plane. I'm a little bit tense too. Gérald is a really good engineer. He knows exactly what he wants and exactly where to go to get it. Dimitri is really good with metal and wood. He's really hard working and is going to do a very fine job. It will be a piece of cake. Something. And finally, defending our own nation are the American Eagles. They're seasoned veterans of all things vintage. I'm Ken Kellett. I'm the captain. Ken is one of the world's experts on pioneer airplanes. Andrew built a number of airplanes. I'm the pilot of the flying machine. I'm looking forward to a lot of fun, a little bit of adventure. Paul, he's going to be right in there helping fabricate this thing. My name is Norman Kellogg. I'm a firefighter with the city of Westminster, Colorado. Really, we're hoping everybody flies, but we intend to win. We're going to beat both the British and the French. We're the American Eagles. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Come on, chaps. Huddle up, teams. As you may recall, it's been 100 years since Wilbur and Orville Wright made their first epic flight at Kitty Hawk. Well, today, we're turning back the clock to the 1900s. Your challenge is to build and fly an aircraft from that time, but only using period junk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, on this special occasion, we are going to be generous and give you 20 hours to build your flying machines. 20 hours. Oof. Yeah, we're going to need But it. the downside is you can only use turn-of-the-century tools. No noisy drilling or grinding. Yeah, right. <laughs> OK. American Eagles, are you ready? Yeah. yeah, ready. British buzzards, are you ready? We yeah. certainly are. French Falcons, et vous prêt? Go! Hey. <laughs> yeah, here we are. An aeroplane in 20 hours. Joking, man. All right, come on, come on. Whew. All right, Ken, what's the plan? We're going to do a monoplane. We're going to do the Walden airplane. It's a lot of triangles. It's a lot of geometry, a lot of tubing. It's got a wooden keel. 
that comes down here, three wheels. The legendary 1909 Walden 9 made history as the first American monoplane to get off the ground. The fuselage is made from metal tubing and supports a large wooden wing and a box-shaped tail section. The pilot sits at the front and the engine is behind with a propeller pushing the plane forward. Captain Ken hopes that this one large wing will get them soaring high in the skies. But all that heavy metal could bring them down to earth with a bump. Wood for the wings, wood for the keel, everything else is tubing. Try to get three wheels, at least two that match, cable. We're going to need a lot of cable for this airplane. We have only 20 hours, so I think we have to turn to a, a monoplane, quite a conventional design. design Should we go for a, a Blario? Looks like a very simple fuselage. Just plywood there. Maybe I got an ID for the, for the landing gear. A bike frame can be a good yeah. ID. The 1909 French Blériot Type 11 was one of the most successful early aircraft. The fuselage is a wooden box-like structure which supports a curved wing and tail. The French Falcons will mount their engine at the front with a propeller pulling the plane through the air. They hope to make their landing gear out of old bicycle parts. It's a light and dainty design, but will it be strong enough to withstand the bumpy takeoffs and landings? We need for the fuselage four beams. We need also plywoods yeah. on the side, tubes, fixed wing flying machine, 1900s, um, wings. Yeah, wings, yeah. Wings, we'll wings, wings, wings. Yeah. We want a simple biplane, really. We'll add a few bits and we'll have a really crazy looking tail. 1909 sort of thing. Unlike the other teams, Captain Bill has plundered from more than one design. The Buzzard's hybrid biplane is inspired by the Wright Flyer's double wings, the elegant tail from the 1909 French Antoinette, while the simple frame fuselage comes from deep inside Bill's head. Their construction is all wood, the wings and tail are covered in canvas, and the engine will be mounted at the front. It may look fantastic, but will this bird ever get off the ground? So we got a large shopping list. Yeah, we're going to need loads of stuff. Wood, cable, ply, a wheel. Get going. All right, guys, we're going to make history here. Let's do it. All right, let's, let's go. go. Hit it. Come on, Paul. Now, let's yeah. go. We are gone. And they're off, pedaling like crazy. Yeah. Hey, on the on. Guys, do you think they'll be able to finish in 20 hours? Don't ask me. My watch stopped 100 years ago. The junkyard contains a mixture of the old and the new. The teams will have to be judicious in their scavenge. Anything modern will be disallowed. And I found some smaller tubing here. Oh, good. That'll work on the tail. Bring it in. I found a lot of tubey too. Bring it in, bring it in. Da 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 da. Oh, blimey. So, Paul, what are we looking for? <laughs> We're looking for mild steel tubing. A lot of people don't realize that, but there was still tubing back then. It's a strange looking aircraft, that's for sure. Is it going to fly? Of course it's going to fly. It's an American design. Hey, I think I found a wheel. One wheel in the trunk. Dimitri, what are you looking for? I'm looking for some wheels for my undercarriage. I need two wheels, but very strong. Have you found the wood you need? Not exactly what we, what we need, but we will have to adjust them. Come in, Dan. How's it going, Darren? Oh, it's, it's is great. It right? it's, just, it's all wood, isn't it? It's all weird. It's, we, we want oh, yeah. all wood. If it was aluminium, it'd be so much easier. Oh, would it? Yeah. Aluminum tubing didn't exist a hundred years ago. Looks like aluminum. I don't think aluminum's gonna work. Right, we're gonna ditch that. Is that, are you happy with that? Well... It's a bit knotty and bent. Yeah. Our teams can't be too careful. After all, their pilots' lives are at stake. Okay, remember all this hardware has got to fly. No, it's too, I think it's too heavy, too big. Dog's bike leg, rejected. Il est un peu tordu, il faut vérifier qu'on peut utiliser celui-là. If they reject everything, there won't be any planes. Bon, donc on le met de côté, il va pas. Donc celui-là, il va pas. Oh, fabric! <laughs> fabric! Andrew is the Eagle style guru. White is so bland. I think I want fuchsia. 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 Right, I'll look better. for fuchsia. It's all about accessories, Paul. <laughs>
Still haven't can't see a keel. Yeah, it needs to be three by two with no knots in it. I think you're asking for something there. You're telling me to get knotted? Yeah. Which team will be the first to get off the ground? Find out after the break. This TLC program is sponsored in part by Old Spice. Introducing new body wash from Old Spice. When I walk through a jam, no one knows who I am. Put my love to the test, and I missed a success. It has a dual action formula, so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey, Ben, need help with the anatomy homework? You! New body wash from Old Spice. Spice things up. What is it? This is a business reality detector. It sniffs out overpromises and exaggerations. Does it work? Try it. Keeney, what's up with the supply chain overhaul? Everything's on schedule. Fuller, how's the wireless thing going? Under budget. Bill, what do you think? I don't think. I'm just a yes man. It works. Zone in on your trouble spots, the places that show age the most, with the most concentrated pro-retinol available over the counter. Intense pro-retinol skin care. Olay Intensive Restoration Treatment. Enough muscle to grab Motor Trend's 2003 Truck of the Year Award. Okay, people, here at Arby's, we roast our beef in ovens, right in the store so it's fresh, juicy, not greasy, which means we have to respect the ovens and the oven mitt. So we don't want to repeat it yesterday now, do we? Oh, oh, get it off. It's heavy. Ow. Got it? Try the oven goodness of Arby's new Italian beef and provolone with beef marinated and Italian seasonings. What are you eating today? In the all-new season of Junkyard Wars, the machines are taking over. Born of diesel and rust, say hello to car dozers, dune buggies, laundry launchers. That's right, laundry launchers. Just a few of this season's mechanical marvels. Contraptions so crazy, we've given them their own series. Junkyard Wars, the new season. The competition begins Wednesday at 9, only on TLC. Hey, I know you're frustrated with slow dial-up internet. And if you think you can't get high-speed internet, think again. Now there's a new high-speed internet solution by satellite. And you can get it right now. DirectWay is the high-speed internet that works anywhere in the continental U.S., just as long as you have a clear view of the southern sky. Interested? Thought so. Now grab your remote, flip to channel 227, and find out about the new high-speed internet option available right now. Channel 227. I'll meet you there. Where in the world can you find the best deals on travel? Visit Orbitz.com. Only Orbitz has the most web fares from the world's leading airlines for the most low fares anywhere. And now save up to 75% on hotels with our exclusive Orbit savers. From great deals on airfares to hotels, no one lets you see the world and save like Orbitz. Visit Orbitz.com for travel made easy. Welcome back to Junkyard Wars. Our three teams from across the globe are off to a flying start. The race is on to build period aircraft. The American Eagles are whistling up a Walden monoplane out of steel tubing. The French Falcons are going for a classic wooden Bellerio, which they must keep super light, but they'll need metal tubing for a strong undercarriage. That's Dimitri's department. Hey, I think I found a keel. The British buzzards are busying themselves with a biplane. 
That means four wings, twice the amount of wood, and twice the amount of work. Oh, now that does look nice. Now, Bill, what? What do you think? Yeah, it looks great. Let's use it. C'est bon pour le moral d'avancer. As the parts start materializing, our teams have to tackle turn-of-the-century tools. Blimey. Amazing, I can make anything at all. In the early 1900s, everything was handcrafted, and power tools were primitive. No portable electric drills or saws, and no staple guns. And electric welding hadn't been invented, so Eagle Andrew has to weld the old-fashioned way using a hot gas flame. Ken! Hello. How you doing? We're doing good. Tell me about your plane. The airplane is called the Walden 9, first monoplane in America. It was designed by a dentist in uh, New York. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the guy lived until the I 60s. I wouldn't have a lot of faith in that, to be honest with you. He, he built a good one. Dr. Henry Walden made history in December 1909 when he took to the air in this beautiful machine. Biplanes had been around since 1903, but this was the first American monoplane. Unfortunately, there are no detailed plans, so Captain Ken has only got these old photographs to go on. You're going to see us making a lot of parts. Nothing's going to look like anything for a while, but then all of a sudden it's going to gel and start, okay. start looking like that. Because your pilot looks extremely happy here. Oh, he's very happy. <laughs> A lot of nails. Wow. Yeah. The original Blair plane would have been built like this with pins and glue and yeah, sure. same, same system. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Exactly That's the same, the same way. I take it that this drawing up here is the plan of your airplane. Yes, oh, yes, it should look like this. Just one wing. Yeah, yeah. it's a monoplane. And, then that, yeah. and it has some kind of wires that hold that in place. Oh, yes, yeah. no wire. No way. The Bellario 11 was Frenchman Louis Bellario's hugely successful monoplane. On the 18th of January, 1909, he made the first flight across the English Channel. His success had future pilots putting in orders for a Bellario 11 of their own. Overnight, he became the first large-scale airplane manufacturer. The plane was not only a commercial success, it also went on to win many competitions, including the Paris to Madrid Air Race. In 1912, Air Ace Adolf Pegu became the first person to loop the loop. He was a national hero. And so who's going to fly? Have you decided who will fly? You will be flying. I'm the guy. He's the pilot. And are you, are you OK? You're OK with this? Is it good? Impeccable. Impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, perfect. Well, it's perfect. Oh, good. Up to now, it's perfect. And 20 hours, 20 hours. It's long, it's hard, isn't it? It will be very tight. Yeah. It's very hard. Oui. So, uh, when was the last time you got to do any planing? Gosh, it's uh, archaic. Well, it is, but it's a beautifully efficient tool. So the design, where does it come from? It comes from all over the place, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a biplane uh, because that gives you a very strong and light structure. Captain Bill has picked some of the strongest design features of the time. The wings are inspired by the Wright Brothers' 1912 biplane, a direct descendant of the first Wright Flyer from 1903. The tail comes from the beautiful 1909 French Antoinette monoplane. Whether Bill will succeed in fusing the best of both worlds is still in doubt. After all, unlike the Antoinette, his design has yet to take to the skies. Laying the parts out in three dimensions, I'm getting a little bit concerned about weight. Darren keeps telling me I'm building a bomber, you know, so... <laughs> Is it going to fly? It's a heck of a lot of aeroplane to build in this time. I, I, I really but don't think do it's it? been done before. Can you do it? But, well, it'll be something of a record if we do. <laughs> Look at a map. <laughs> in case we get lost in the junkyard. The American Eagles are going off course. You can see the beautiful view in here. Paul seems more interested in touchdown than takeoff. Go along here with, we with welding goggles. <laughs> no such frivolity for the French. They're focused on their fuselage. On l'annonce par terre. Oh, 
Paul. What do you think? How are the teams doing? How are they feeling? The British, very polite. You know, oh, good show. Oh, nice job. Very well done. Grand job. Those French boys are lovely. Mm -hmm. They look so nice, don't they? They yeah, look like the best. The, they can carry a neckerchief in a shirt better than any other European. No, no man can wear a neckerchief. What a French yeah. <laughs> Just go speak to the American team because they're like, well, we're going to win because <laughs> we're the best and we're the smartest and uh, no worries right now. These things are guaranteed to give you a blood blister. But the Eagles' confidence is vanishing fast. <laughs> the old tools are testing their metal. You better be beating this over a rock. All right, get me a hammer. Give me that. Tools are also driving young Dimitri around the bend. J'en ai plié un de traviole, deux de traviole. Gerard isn't impressed. Attends, mais il y en a un, il y a 45 degrés d'écart. Mais ouais, mais il l'a tourné. Dimitri's twisted pipes are also trying his captain's patience. Là, c'est le point où on n'a pas droit à l'erreur, donc. Euh... It's back to the floor for the young gun. Buzzard's captain Bill is the brains behind his team, but genius always comes at a price. Wendy, what? I've started faffing. No time for faffing. Oh, sorry. Inventors have the reputation of being eccentric, and our judge is no exception. He built his first glider while still at school, and from then on, it was downhill all the way. Among his many achievements is a patent for a revolutionary hang glider mechanism. And he was the first person to fly an ultralight across Lake Erie. Oh, this is some place, isn't it? Chuck Sluzarczyk is a modern-day aviation pioneer. So, Chuck, when did you first sort of really get involved in flying? And the whole, was it a childhood thing? I mean, oh, yes, yes. My yeah. father was a pilot. Right. And uh, so I started playing with airplanes when I was in diapers. And this is a pretty tall order, though, asking these guys oh. to build these in... Very tall, very tall order. This is this is almost an impossible task. It's uh, like trying to build the Great Wall of China in two weeks. Now, the American Eagle's design is, uh, is rather unusual. They took a very obscure American design, which, quite frankly, I would have never done. American Eagles are to be handed a badge for courage right. uh, because it's <laughs> going to be a touchy airplane to fly. And what about the French Falcons? The Blurio is probably one of the most famous French designs yes. out there. Frankly, I would have built that myself right. if I was on the French team. And what about now the British Buzzards, the only team that are going for a biplane? The British uh, design is the only one that doesn't have a recognizable look about it. There's things that were taken a bit here and a bit there and put them together. Watched together in a yes, true British yes. fashion. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, this is this is what the show's about, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Botching things together. Yeah, who's your money on at the moment, then? It's right. going to be a function of how fast they can get them built. My hope is that these magnificent men and their flying machines go uppity up up instead of down, <laughs> down, down. down. <laughs> I'm on a cold streak here, man. If they're going to go uppity up up, the American Eagles will need a propeller. Yeah, I'm fine and squat. <laughs> yes, I think we should swap. Swap. Yeah. Well, you don't like it. International trade negotiations are preoccupying the Europeans. The French may have something the British want. Okay. I think what we need is one that's bigger than me. The heavier British biplane needs a longer propeller than the French Falcon's lighter monoplane. We swap. Okay. You take this one. Do you need any cloth? I don't have that. <laughs> now that the British have got their prop, they can start spreading their wings. Wendy's cutting out wooden ribs. These will form a skeleton which they'll cover with fabric. And with four wings to make, there are going to be no spare ribs. So how many of these have I got to make? About 32. You've got to be kidding. Hey, won't it look great? It's going to look absolutely wicked. Aircraft wings have a particular shape. When air flows over the wing, it breaks into two airstreams. The air moving over it moves faster than the air moving under it. The faster the air, the lower the pressure, so the air above has less pressure than the slower moving air below. That imbalance of pressure creates a lifting force on the wing that literally sucks the airplane off the ground. But the teams will be going nowhere without some sort of power source. The Federal Aviation Authority have strict rules about what is allowed to fly. Normal junkyard engines just wouldn't pass the test, so they all get identical new ones. British buzzards, we've got a little gift for oh, you. Oh, wow. I think we could cross the channel with that. Gentlemen, I have a rather Whoa. splendid new engine for you. Look at that. Wow. I come bearing gifts. 
Bon jeu Waouh wow. 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 C'est sympathique ah. ah. Superbe ah. Ah, ouais. wow. What do you think is the biggest challenge so far C'est vraiment de faire 120 heures. Généralement, une construction comme ça, ça prend 6 mois. Donc le challenge, c'est de savoir exactement, d'avoir dans notre tête bien le, le, le schéma de ce que l'on veut faire et ne pas perdre de temps. Have you had experience of building unusual airplanes before that actually fly? Yeah, the Wright Brothers airplane. All oh, right. You, so yeah, you built I, I built and flew the 1903. What was it like to fly? Was Awful. It, was it? Captain Ken's claim to fame is that he's the only person in modern times to have flown a true 1903 Wright flyer. Not only that, he actually built the replica himself. As his first attempt in the 1970s demonstrates, it's not the easiest plane to get off the ground. How long did it actually take you to build the right flight? Do you know how many hours you spent doing it? All I have is a, like a good guess. I think we spent around 3,500 hours right. building the airplane. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a lot of hours. Yeah. I, I know a couple of you guys were on the show before, right? But as competitors? That was Darren and I. We competed in the first Scrap Heap Challenge program to build a glider. Darren's hang glider was terrifying to fly, but at least it was a tried and tested design. Take up, Slack! Wacky Captain Bill, on the other hand, came up with one of the most ludicrous flying machines ever seen, and he certainly came down with a bump. It's easy to get complacent. You turn out big bits of structure like this and you think you've done it, but the devil is in the detail with these. Roll up, roll up, 16 hours remaining, c'est heures seulement, merci, 16 hours. Holy cow. The eagle's nest is looking frighteningly empty. Well, I wanted to drill these first and then stick this in here and then oh, drill this one so it all lines up. But at last, they've commenced their assembly. Amazingly, this bit of scaffolding will be the rudder for the tail of their plane. Sweet. Sweet, look at that. <laughs> all right, okay, you guys passed the test. All right. They've got another 149 components to go, but Captain Ken's still a stickler for accuracy. And you need to rotate that around so it faces this way. The French Falcons are also focusing on their tail. It's a precision operation. But Dimitri's using brute force to battle with the undercarriage. Hey, Eric, you have reason. What? Celui-là, on tape, il a pété. Tu, tu démontes, tu remets un patch ici, et le même là, et tu contreperces. Ah, the hot-headedness of youth. Put on the circular saw. Yeah, I'm gonna... The British are also getting carried away. Captain Bill is marking up the wooden beams for their wings, and Ian's in charge of cutting them. They're different lengths. Can't be. I think you've cut at the whole position. Oh, what? Bodger Bill's inspired. Don't worry, lad. I feel a shortening of the span coming on. You know what would be neat? Is that the spirits of Orville and Wilbur Wright were here, oh, kind of yeah. watching over yeah, yeah. us. So I wonder what they would say, you know? <laughs> They'd be fascinated, wouldn't they? Well, they might think we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, trying to build an airplane in two days, you know? The yeah. only thing crazier is the, the spirits of uh, <laughs> Orville and Wilbur Wright. <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah, it's a ridiculous idea. Yeah. Ooh, here comes Orville and Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Do you know what I think, Orville? What's that, Wilbur? These young fellas in there, they're plum cooking. What are they trying to do? Build the airplane in two days and it's going to fly. That can't be done. No, no way. It took us, how long did it take us to do it? It took us years. <laughs> Things are going to start hopping. Okay, we've got Eagles our... Captain Ken isn't impressed with his team's progress. What we're going to do is we're going to put together the uh, center section. Andrew and I are going to focus on the pilot's position. His team are still confused about what they're supposed to be doing. See, it's going to go together real quick, so don't anybody sweat it. We're, we're ahead of the game, I think, on this thing. And what game is that, Ken? The Falcons are not impressed with Dimitri's undercarriage. He's certainly no lightweight. Taskmaster Girard shows him how it's done. On met l'autre en haut, ce que tu avais fait tout à l'heure. Ouais. I've got a problem here, but the ribs don't fit. Buzzard Ian isn't the only one making mistakes. It's now Captain Bill's turn. Their wings are already shorter than they wanted, and now they've just become wider. I've goofed up. Can we just saw a bit off? 
It's all right, I think. Oh. So what we're going to do, we're going to increase the size of the wing. All right. We must think three times and cut once, or we'll be making scrap. Will the buzzards, falcons, or eagles ever spread their wings? Stay with us and find out. Junkyard Wars. Junkyard Wars is brought to you by IBM, taking business to the next level with e-business on demand. What are these? Magic business binoculars. How do they work? You look through them, you see the future of business. Wow. The future sure looks different. What do you see? It's a 3D holographic projection of the world to come. Things move fast. Everything's integrated. Everything works in real time. How do we get everything to work? I don't know. It says I need another quarter. performs like the BMW 3 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Why use dirty water to clean your floor? Why clean up after cleaning up? Get the Swiffer Wet Jet Power Mop, the only ready-to-use mopping system with a super-absorbent lock-away core and a jet action sprayer to power through tough messes on your entire floor. Why do dogs always walk across clean floors? Stop cleaning. Start Swiffering. Now available in a new antibacterial solution. Hello. <laughs> Steve? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Dude, are you still getting coffee? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, seriously. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my, that's a pig drinking a cappuccino. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. T-Mobile camera phones. Get more. Papa John's presents a mouth-watering deal that'll put a smile on your face. Say cheese. Sticks. Free cheese sticks. When you buy a made-to-order large one-topping Papa John's pizza for just $9.99, John himself will toss in our delicious cheese sticks absolutely free. We start with Papa John's hand-tossed dough, garlic sauce, cheese made with 100% mozzarella, and two zesty sauces for dipping. Call your neighborhood Papa John's today and get free cheese sticks when you order a large one-topping pizza for only $9.99. We see you smiling. Better ingredients. Better pizza. Papa John's. How far can you go? Ah! How long can you last? Ah! How much can you endure? Seven stranded teams, one remote island, eating, sleeping, ah! and competing in the ultimate real life adventure where the longer you last, the closer you get to the ultimate grand prize. Yes! Who's got the game to go all the way? Endurance on Discovery Kids and Saturday mornings on NBC. What if it were all true? Phone calls from the dead? Horrifying campus encounters? What if they were all lies? I'm Natasha Henstridge, and these are Urban Legends. Mostly true stories. Tuesday from 9 to 11, only on TLC. Welcome back to the first afternoon of our pilot project. Our teams are flying by the seat of their pants. Come on, Tyler, let's go. OK, 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 I'm go. going, I'm going, I'm trying, Onward. I'm trying. I'm... Our international aviators are battling to build antique aircraft in two days. And we're already halfway through day one. You want me to stick this on? Yeah, that'd do. Other side. The buzzard's biplane is taking shape. Block. What are you calling a block? They've made two of their four wing structures, and they're now nailing their fuselage. Allez, c'est parti. C'est parti. Allez, hop. On y va doucement. The Falcon's fuselage is more complicated, but Monsieur Blario would be proud. The Eagle's monoplane is still just a jumble of steel tubing. Will they ever get their stuff together? Okay, that is the front. That's the rear. No fuselage, but they do have part of their undercarriage. This is too cool. 
The American Eagles are, are running a little bit behind schedule, if you right. ask me. They're using period tools, old-fashioned yeah. drills and saws, to try to cut steel tubing. That's a lot of hacking yeah. and sawing. And they've only got so many hours to finish this yeah. job, yeah. so uh, the American Eagles better get cracking. And what about the British Buzzards? They, as a team, uh, are working very well together. Yeah. But I'm afraid I, I think the airplane's a bit heavier than I All thought right. it really needs to be. So a little bit lighter weight, I think, would probably do them well. The French Falcons seem to be making a lot of stuff. They're going ahead very well. If they varnished it up, it would be a work yeah. of art and a piece <laughs> of furniture. <Yes. laughs> the airplane looks to me like it's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So uh, right now, I have to go Viva la France. Viva la France. <laughs> no, bad <laughs> up. International pride is at stake as our teams battle to recreate aviation history. You want to just eyeball it from the end, Andrew? Close enough. Pretty darn close. Okay. It's a trade-off between time and accuracy. If you could help us visualize, this is obviously the front. Well, the pilot will be in between these two frames. You can see the bottom of these two frames mm -hmm. here. And uh, the wings will come from the top of the fuselage. Okay. Here, this way. The main part of the Falcon's Blario is their wooden box-like fuselage. They'll build two wings out of wooden frames, cover them with fabric, and bolt them onto either side. Then they'll attach wire bracing to a steel central tower, which will also support their undercarriage. The engine and propeller will be at the front of the aircraft to pull them along. But they've got to get cracking if they're going to get finished. We are, we are tired with my friends. We are very tired. <laughs> it's very, very hard and very, very hot. We have so many things to do that it's, it can become a mountain. <laughs> I'm trying to get up to speed with what you're all doing now. Uh, There's definitely wings there. A couple of wings. And are they top or bottom wings? These are tops. You've got your right. Uh, Here's doing bottoms. And this is half this the fuselage. Is, this is half. That the, looks no, no, of, no, no. That's all the fuselage. That's, oh, I see. It looks kind of heavy and yeah, solid. The but. widest bit of the fuselage is Bill. The British Buzzard's fuselage is just a thin wooden frame with an engine and propeller at one end and a large tail at the other. Most of their strength is in the four wings made from wood and covered with fabric. These wings should form a sturdy box-shaped structure that should keep the whole thing rigid. After all, it's only glued together. What else do you reckon you'll do today before the end of today? Well, we really want to get all our structures together and the glue hardening overnight right. is right. our aim. And it yeah. looks to me like it's going to happen. Bring me up to speed. Where are we right now? We need to get the, our center part assembled. This is, this, this is our center keel. And then the wheels go here, which are those double pipe things there. Okay. And the front wheel goes in there. Once we get our center section spars drilled, we put the center section on, and then it's like a big tinker toy set. The problem is, the airplane doesn't have a true fuselage, and so you come in here expecting to see a fuselage, you're not going to see it. Right. The Eagles plan to join up their steel tubes to form a center section, which will also be their undercarriage. They'll have a network of cables radiating from this central tower, which should keep their wooden fabric-covered wings rigid. In front of the pilot will be an elevator, and behind him will be the engine and propeller. It's a complicated plan, and it still remains a figment of Captain Ken's imagination. Now, what's it like being you know, pushed around by the big man? Ken's getting a little testy, but you know, that's just, just the way he always is. You know, he's always kind of been out there. <laughs> he's kind of know. the artsy one, right? You know, yeah. 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 You know, I'm like the motorhead, and he's like, you know, always <laughs> figuring stuff out, you know, and I wouldn't have the foggiest idea where to start on one of these well, things. Uh, teams, you have 12 hours remaining. Deux heures seulement, 12 hours, thank you. Young Falcon Dimitri is still wrestling with his undercarriage. Ça, c'est nickel. Ça, c'est top. At last, Gerard is satisfied. Ah oui, ça, super. The Americans are preparing their rudder and tail yeah, section. Here. We're going to hold it, we're going to square it, we're going to and you're going to weld it, okay? All right. Captain Ken may still have problems communicating, but it's an impressive bit of teamwork. All right, that should be enough to hold it once it cools. And bye. That's perfect. Good. Buzzard Ian is laying out their third and fourth wings. Captain Bill is checking measurements to the smallest fraction of an inch. This one wants to be... 
300. They can't afford any more miscalculations. What a good job we spotted there. Once they stick it all together, there'll be no turning back. Are you nearly going to be ready for gluing? With my limited knowledge of aviation, one of, I would imagine one of the basic prerequisites is wings. And I've only really seen sort of wings with the British buzzards. I've not seen any sign of anything remotely <laughs> resembling a wing anywhere else. <laughs> Frankly, I'm nervous that without seeing more wings out there, because there's quite a lot to do yet. There's covering, there's the rigging wire, yeah. and then the engine installation, fuel lines. <laughs> this guy's on. And the list goes on. I, 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 and the list yeah. goes on. So, Chuck, have you changed your mind about who your money's on at this stage? <clears throat> no, not yet. For the moment, I'm still sticking with the yeah. French team. Okay. Although they're missing wings, the Falcons do have a beautiful fuselage. Yeah. Bon? Ah, oui. Yahoo. But Dimitri is still having problems with his undercarriage. Hey, Andrew, I got a job for you. Are you ready now? <laughs> He's seeking international aid. Andrew's only too happy to oblige. Hey, hey what's going on there? For a price. <laughs> he owes me a croissant. <laughs> I bring you a bottle of wine. OK. <laughs> Can I try it? You want to try it? Yeah. Thank you. My father said to me, this is a real job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go back, get to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, the American team. <laughs> Time is running out. You have got 11 hours remaining. Ah bon? No worries. <laughs> that means only one hour left today, and the British better get gluing so it can set overnight. Let's stick the whole lot together. OK, fuselage, fuselage, go, go, go. Buzzards, buzzards, glue, glue, glue. That's all that works. All right, look at, check this guy out. The other teams appear to have gotten more done than yeah. you today. How do you feel about that? It's an illusion. It's all an illusion. This is the illusion of progress. <laughs> so are you still as confident now as you were this morning? Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> There's only one sort of obvious thing to me that's missing at the moment. And that's the, the kind of wing bit. The wings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you're absolutely right. Am I right? We have just started one wing. All right, you are beginning. To... You are thinking about them. Yeah, we are I... a bit late. Yeah. All right, I'll be back. What is the frenetic pace? Fast setting um, adhesive, and we want to get this whole structure glued up tonight so that uh, when we get tucked up in our little beds, it'll right. be curing off, and it'll be as strong as anything in the morning. Rock solid in the morning. Are you guys happy with like the progress you've made today? Or? We're a bit too close to it to really see it in perspective, I think. Yeah. Get yeah. in there, you swine. Who would you put your money on? Right now, I hate to say it, but I got to put on the French. The British are doing very well, though, the aren't British they? The British are doing very well, but I'm going to put my money on the Americans because I just think they'll put it out of the bag. Ten hours would be the end of a normal Junkyard Wars build, but we're only halfway there. Remember, the teams have two days. Relax, Bill, relax. Teams! 30 seconds! That's all I Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, teams, your time is up. Happy New Year. Please put your tools down and come back to Earth. You've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Very good work, team. Right. Very good. Hey, on all people. I think we should get some sleep. Oh, fantastic. Things going. They can't resist a sneaky peek at each other's machines. The French Falcons have a great fuselage, but they've yet to get started on their wings. It's a work of art, it really is. Yeah. The British buzzards have carved out most of the structure of their biplane, but will these jigsaw pieces ever fit together? The American Eagle's workshop is piled high with steel tubing, but it's hard to pick out a plane for pipes. It is not that clear up to now. <laughs> <laughs> not to you. It's not clear. To us, it's perfectly clear. <laughs> the teams have 10 hours left. Will they get finished? Find out after the break. Junkyard Wars. 
This TLC program is sponsored in part by You Can Take Life As It Comes or You Can Grab Life By The Horns. Dodge. Hey, Don! Hey, what's up? You going to Tommy's party? I can't. I'm working. Oh, break, break, break. The Dodge SXTs. Four cool cars. And you won't have to work two jobs just to buy one. Don, you made it! I like your hat. Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. Looking for better allergy relief? Benadryl is proven better than the leading prescription allergy medicine at relieving your worst allergy symptoms, like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. Benadryl, proven more effective. What is it? It's a UBA. A UBA? Universal Business Adapter. What's it do? It connects anything to everything. What's this for? Your laptop, your mainframe, call center, Unix servers, Linux servers, internet, supply chain, payroll system, HR, email. Slick. Is it affordable? Fast. Easy. Very. Does it work in Europe? You need an adapter. And here we have the entranceway, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, the linen closet. Okie dokie. And over here we have the den. Very cozy. And over here's the master bedroom, the bathroom. The sunshine, fresh scent of game leaves your laundry beaming with such a clean, fresh smell. It's hard to resist. Discover the value. Coral calcium, only $7.50. Discover the selection. Glucosamine chondroitin, only $7.35. Discover the quality. Natural vitamin E, only $2.95. Discover the convenience. Natural vitamin C, only $1.15. Discover the best way to buy the finest quality vitamins, minerals, and herbs right from home at incredible 70% savings. CoQ10, only $4.80. Discover Puritan's Pride, America's number one shop at home vitamin catalog. Saw Palmetto, only $2.90. Over $4 million people nationwide trust the Puritan's Pride catalog for all their vitamin needs. No need juice. Only $8.95. Call now. Call now. Call now for your free 70% off Puritan's Pride catalog and discover the smart way to buy vitamin Esther C. Only $4.65. All Puritan's Pride products have a 100% one-year money-back guarantee. What are you waiting for? Call now for your free Puritan's Pride catalog and receive a coupon for $5 off your first order. Call 1-800-476-7474. Junkyard Wars is getting fired up with a brand new set of solid steel struggles. Get your junk on with Dune Buggies, Beach Rescue, and Golf. Well, off-road golf. Just a few of this season's mechanical marvels. Contraptions so crazy, we've given them their own series. Junkyard Wars, the new season. The competition begins Wednesday at 9, only on TLC. Welcome to the second day of the build and everything's going marvellously. Teams are busy and we're just going for a ride. Start driving, Miss Daisy. <laughs> Come on. The British, French and Americans are battling to turn piles of junk into period planes. On commence, là, and they only have 10 hours left. Key element today, let's get this center section uh, finished up. All right. All right. Let's hit it. Right. That'll be glued up now. So we'll have another big stick up. Yep. Yeah. Stick up. Light stick up. More glue. More glue. Uh -huh. On va se partager un peu les tâches. Oui. Bon, et puis vous bossez sur les ailes, vous, et moi je bosse sur la profondeur. Ça marche. Bon, alors, parti. Nettoyage, c'est parti. The American Eagles are struggling with the copious components that make up their monoplane. Andrew is working on the elevator, while the rest of the team focus on the undercarriage. Eagle-eyed Captain Ken's on the lookout for any mistakes. You guys kind of screwed this cabane up here, <laughs> this compression. But he's got to take responsibility for this one. You helped me put that on yesterday. Remember how crooked it was going on? <laughs> be pointing fingers at me. The French Falcons have almost finished their fuselage. They can now start on their wings. As always, Gerald is chief of quality control. Am I too strong? The British Buzzard's biplane also has a fuselage. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The three airplanes all started with the hardest part of construction, which is the fuselage. Mm. Generally, in designing an airplane, the wing is the easiest thing to do. Right. And the fuselage is the part where everything must connect to. Yes. Yes. And they're all past that stage. Yeah. And what about the, the French Falcons? They're not quite as fast today as they were yesterday, but they've gotten a the wing going, so they've got visible means of support for their fuselage. The British Buzzards, uh, they're plodding right along. But then you have to remember, they've got four wings to build instead of two. I somewhat suspect that the American Eagles will really start catching up once they get building the wing proper. But as of now, the American Eagles are still uh, a, a bit behind the eight ball. My logical side of me says that the French team so far still has the edge. But the Falcons seem to be going over the edge, and it's getting sticky. La fatigue commence à se faire sentir. They've glued their wings the wrong way and have to pull them apart. Ça le ferait pas avec deux ailes droites, hein? Ah, ce coup-ci, il faut plus se planter. C'est où alors? So where are we? Kind of bring me up to speed where we are. The main structure for the wings are done. The tail plane is done. The mm -hmm. elevator is done. The rudder is laid out, ready for gluing. Um, the fuselage is virtually complete. Yes, we've got the big components. We've still got all the fabricing to do. We've still got all the control systems to make. You know, there's a lot of work in all that. It's the movable surfaces on an airplane's wings and tail which give the pilot control of the plane. Two ailerons mounted on the rear outside edge move in opposite directions, decreasing lift on one wing while increasing it on the other. This causes the airplane to roll. The elevator is on the horizontal tail surface and tilts up or down, changing the amount of lift on the tail, bringing the nose up or down. The rudder on the vertical tail fin swivels from side to side, pushing the tail left or right. The pilot usually uses the rudder along with the ailerons to turn the airplane. It, it seems like things are moving along really nicely, but I imagine uh, yeah, there's got to be some things here. The, yeah, it's um, when you're building an aircraft, it, the main structure can come together very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's the fine detail that takes the time. So um, you have to make cut some corners, so to speak. Well, you can only cut so many corners because yeah. somebody's going to fly this. Our tail unit is finished. Uh, right. Right here, this is our rudder. And this will be covered with fabric? It, this will be covered, right. and this will be covered. Andrew's covering the forward elevator. You have an elevator right in front of the pilot. Rather than having an elevator on the tail of their plane, the American Eagles will mount it in front. Their other control services will be more conventional. There'll be a rudder on the tail just behind the propeller. And as normal, they'll have ailerons on their wing when they get around to making it. Because it does look like you've got a lot of components now. It's the nature of this airplane. Yeah. I mean, it is. Uh, airplanes are lots of pieces. Right. And you're not going anywhere without any one of them. Yes. So you got to have them all before you get started. What are you working on right now? Um, the wing. We have done already one, which is there. And we are preparing the second one. OK. Well, what kind of control are you going to be able to have over the plane? Uh, on the wings, nothing. We will have only two axis control. But now, usually, aren't planes controlled sort of on a sideways, up and down? And yeah, and also roll. OK. We will not have roll control. In their quest for simplicity, the French Falcons are going to dispense with ailerons. This means they'll have no control over roll. But they'll still have an elevator on the tail to take the nose up or down, and a rudder to steer them left or right. They'll just have to make sure they don't have to make any sharp turns. We are a bit late, I would say. Yeah, but are that's you? the thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, a little bit. A teams, you only have six hours remaining. Il vous reste six heures, c'est tout. <laughs> you need to hammer it in this bit here, please. The buzzards are nailing down their wings, but not everyone is finding it easy. Ah, I hate these nails. How many nails have you put in so far, Wendy? Two. <laughs> Wendy also adds a couple of finishing touches to the fuselage. That should do. This one pretty solid. OK, right way up. And they move it into position, ready for the wings. The Americans are taking off at last. As soon as Paul gets that last brace in, we're going we're gonna to bolt this thing together. Go down. Norm, you need to come down with it. Yeah. This is the main structure of their fuselage. It'll be both the undercarriage and the tower to which they'll attach their wings. This may not look like much of a plane, but remember, the Wright brothers started with bicycles. 
and it was their bicycle shop that supported them during their early years of aeronautical experiments. Wilbur was four years senior to Orville and a technical genius obsessed by the idea of powered flight. It was fitting, therefore, that at Kitty Hawk in December 1903, he was given the first chance to fly. Unfortunately, he lost control of the plane and crashed on takeoff. They spent three days doing repairs, and then it was Orville's turn. He flew for 12 seconds and covered 120 feet. Orville Wright entered the history books. Uh, Wilbur? Mm-hmm. I think this is the problem. <laughs> I'll tell you what the problem is, Orville. Everybody thinks you flew that plane first, and that just ain't true. Oh, are we gonna go through that again? Well, I mean, I took that plane up in the air first. Sure, I crashed it, but I took it up first. Read your history books. I was the first one to fly, successfully. Well, well I'll tell you something else. Everybody always remembers Wilbur and Orville. They don't just remember Orville, Orville, Orville. It's always gonna be Orville. Just get over it and fix a bike. <sighs> The French Falcons also seem to be inspired by bicycles. On se trompe pas de sens. Ça c'est celle du bas. But airplanes are a little more complicated. Doucement, doucement comme ça. We try to install the undercarriage. It takes mo more time than than when we plan. Uh, was this too ambitious then? Or you know, a lot of uh, small things to do. You know, mm -hmm. just small pieces to, to right. glue on the airplane. And uh, as we are a bit tired. It takes more time than uh, planned. Put a level on this. The eagles are getting ready to fit their tail. It's, it's, it's important done. that they line it up correctly. Right It'll... there is pretty close. It's starting to look more like an airplane. We've got the uh, landing gear attached to the center section right here. Right. We have our front keel, which runs underneath the table. And right now we're going to do the tail booms. We're going to make two sides. Then when that's done, we can actually attach the whole tail surface and the rudder, which is already finished. Where did you say it balanced? The... British Captain Bill is checking the center of gravity of his plane. He thinks it's back heavy. Control bit. Go ahead. Up. Go OK, down. You just hold that there. Changing the engine's position could make a difference. What's the verdict? I reckon we can just do it. It's important that their plane is balanced around the point where the pilot sits, rather like a giant teeter-totter. Their tail is heavier than anticipated, and the only way to counter its weight is to extend the fuselage and move the engine further forward. If they don't get it right, they could be heading for the stars. Will the engine be mounted up here? The quite, engine, so it's quite high. The up. engine resides upon this pole. Right. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to extend this even further. Right. In the whole aeroplane, we need to get balancing about there. Right. Which is happily just about where your bottom is on the yeah. uh, solar plexus. <laughs> <laughs> the Americans' pile of poles is finally starting to look like a plane as they put rudder and tail on the fuselage. Hey, did anybody get a boost out of putting the tail on? You mean like maybe Norm? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting excited. And up. The buzzards are also fitting the rudder to their plane. Captain Bill puts it through its preliminary paces. Loads. Loads of movement. It's looking good, isn't it? Yep, passed. Cover it. Extra, extra, read all about it. You have four hours remaining. Four hours. That's not good. Bon, faut aller vite, hein, c'est de la 5, hein. The Falcons are using fast-setting glue on their undercarriage. It's their only chance of finishing on time. Oh, avance, 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 c'est gentil, y'a pas, y'a pas du tout en haut. Ça va pas. Le, le fusage est trop... Vite, 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 vite tu, Un serre-joint, prends, euh, prends un petit serre-joint. Non, 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 tiens-moi le train, là, la jambe, là, 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 là. Voilà, stop, stop Non, Par non, contre... non. Elle est en train de coller. Au moment où on est au boulet, au boulet des gens, y'a personne. It looks like they're about to come unstuck. The eagles are still missing a vital component. Can you guys spare me for a little bit? And if I'm kind of looking for a propeller. If Paul can't find something soon, they may have to make one. Oh man, no prop, no propeller. I have produced some scrap here. The British are also feeling the pressure. There's still shed loads to do. This has started to take me a long time to do something relatively simple. Need to pick up the pace a bit, really. 
Will the buzzards, falcons, or eagles ever finish on time? Or will their machines vanish into thin air? Stay glued. Junkyard Wars. Junkyard Wars is brought to you by Arby's. Try the oven goodness of Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. What are you eating today? Okay, oven mitt, time to get another roast out of the... Look, it's Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. The oven goodness of beef, roasted right in the store so it's juicy, not greasy, then marinated in Italian seasonings on a soft baguette. Canta! Okay, okay, I'll stop. Try Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. What are you eating today? This is Mark. Hi, honey. Hey, what's up? Do you know where your clippers are? Uh, I don't know. In the garage? Uh-uh. I'm, I'm in a meeting now. Can we do it in a toolbox, maybe? Uh, no. The closet. Oh, no, Landon? Uh-huh. Oh, uh, is he all right? Uh, yeah. Dad? Oi. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. T-Mobile camera phones. Get more. I like this game. I don't like to sweat. I use Red Zone because it's the strongest stuff you can get. Made just for guys. It absorbs in and helps stop sweat, period. Try it. If you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. Dude, think about it. Would they guarantee it if it didn't work? Red Zone from Old Spice. Doctors recommend elevating your heart rate at least 30 minutes a day. Here's to your health. The BMW 3 Series. The ultimate driving machine. Meanwhile, in Albuquerque, the CFO of a burgeoning olive import company has an epiphany. By eliminating one olive from every jar of olives they sell, he could save the company $200,000. An idea so well received that he's asked to save 500,000 more. There you go, Mr. Carter. Hard to believe a phone can save us a million bucks, huh? <laughs> what makes an urban legend? Does it have to scare you? Does it have to be true? Don't believe everything you see. There's no denying the power of the urban legend. Phone calls from the dead, a dress with a vicious curse. Join me, Natasha Henstridge, as we tell you what to believe. Skeptical? Don't be. Mostly true stories, urban legends revealed. Tuesday from 9 to 11, only on TLC. This castaway turns a boring backyard into an island oasis. Then, while he's having fun in the sun, she has a little fun of her own, creating a colorful casita. It's back-to-back -back episodes of While You Were Out, Friday at 8, only on TLC. On the next Faking It, this is here. a regular Joe from Chicago, I guess you would call me the typical beer drinker, says goodbye to his yeah. basement sports bar and hello to the wine cellar yeah, to fake it as a sommelier. I never heard of a sommelier. I thought it was a country in Africa. But can this beer buff really convince experts he knows about wine? Oh, you got it. Like a you know, we're going to have a really hard time. Find out in TLC's new series, Faking It, Friday at 10 on TLC. On the next, what not to wear. An opera singer's got a wardrobe that's a real tragedy. It's very Martha Dump truck. Can $5,000 and expert advice take her from disaster to diva? We've got <laughs> magic to do. Or will her old style make an encore? You know what? Look, look at her. Oh, you're ruining it. Find out when TLC shows you what not to wear. Saturday at 10 on TLC. Change your look, change your clothes, change your life. Junkyard Wars. Uh -uh. Welcome back to Junkyard Wars, where the only thing flying is time. Get out of the way. The American Eagles are still missing a propeller, and they've only just started to build their wings.
The British buzzards have started covering their first wing, but they've still got three more to do. Bill and Darren, can we borrow you for two minutes? Right, I just want you to hold it really tight. Pull it, all of you pull really tight, yeah? OK, if you stick your corner down. They're using a modern fabric since they don't make cotton like they used to. This is looking wonderful, Ian. I'm glad to hear it. It's exactly the same method as was used 100 years ago. This is a German bomber production line during World War I, where everything was handcrafted. The men worked on the wood, the women did the sewing. No such distinction in our teams. The French Falcons are also covering their wings. In the old days, they stretched the fabric before they glued it. But modern fabrics just need ironing to make them taut. This is très belle. Beautiful. Yes, you must do this all the time. Yes, but if my wife sees that, I'm finished. Oh, really? <laughs> you will be doing it all the time, then? Yes. <laughs> you do it very well. Your shirts would be beautiful. They're so smooth. <laughs> the Americans are a long way from covering their wings, and Paul still hasn't found a propeller. But he's brought in cable as consolation. But that's perfect, perfect stuff. You've got a lot of cable to rig. Yeah, through. there's a lot of things that support the wing. You know, there's cables that come down that way, and there's mm -hmm. cables that come up from the landing gear. Hey, how are things with Captain Ken and explaining information? Ken's a jerk. You know, yeah. frankly, none well, of us <laughs> like it. Yeah. I heard that. I didn't want to be the one to say it. But is Ken able to kind of get his vision out to you guys so you can all do your own individual thing? If we can pull this off, Ken is the biggest genius in this junkyard. The tailplane just sits on top of the fuselage and, it, and it's bolted in onto, onto the front there. The rudder here right, is then fixed onto the post at the back. Just the wings to go on then. Yeah, just that. I mean, just it's that. only a plane, oh, yeah. and you guys were ambitious enough to build a plane with four wings instead of two like everybody else. OK. Oops. Gloves stuck. Very nice. Teams, you have three hours remaining. Trois heures seulement. Time for a break. Relax a little bit. On va y arriver. The flighty falcons are cabling, and after his success with the undercarriage, Dimitri's on a roll. How's, how's the French team doing? When I was in there, I was saying, what well, this reminds me of something. It's actually a Paris bar, very late at night, when they've all drunk far too much Pernod. Because Pernod <laughs> kind of cheers you up to that one. You go, oh, oh, oh. and after a while, you go, oh. <laughs> they're just kind of deadened by the, the job they've got. The Americans are yeah. doing very, very well, yeah. although there are some communication problems in the American camp. Ken doesn't oh. communicate very well. Right. It's all up here. Yeah, so it just doesn't come out here, yeah. you know. The British are very chatty still, but they had the ambition of four wings <laughs> rather than two. Yeah. You know, Bill's great big toy is coming together, but they are quite behind. Uh, just mark these plates up wrong. These plates are kind of fundamental because they hold the wings on. There's chaos and confusion in the British workshop as they start to cover the underside of their first wing. Captain Bill is talking the talk. Come on, brain, work. There must be a method in their madness. They soon finish that first wing. Oh, would you look at that? A wing with wires hanging out of it. It's getting there. The eagles have now started covering. They're catching up fast, but there's still something missing. You know, before it gets any darker, yeah. we're losing the light, maybe you ought to go out one last time and see if you can find that prop. All right, yeah. This time, failure's not an option. Falcons Eric and Dimitri are varnishing their first wing. When it dries, it will add strength to the fabric. Girard and Giraud are using bicycle inner tubes for their undercarriage suspension. This should give pilot Eric a smooth ride. Eagle Paul is nearly at the end of his tether. He's been hunting a propeller for almost two days. Hey. Now there's a happy man. There we go. Got it. Ooh, it's a beauty, too. Hey, guys. What? Found it. Whoa! Whoa. Look at Come Paul! On, Paul. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> You're a hero. You have proved your worth. Ooh. All right. We have our prop. Hey, look at that. We almost have our motor mount. 
Teams, you have one hour remaining. Une heure sur le mort. Piece of cake. Keep panicking. Can we afford to drop this? <laughs> Not really. The buzzards carefully lift their engine to the nose of their biplane. The Falcons are hot on their tail, but their engine won't fit. Time for some last minute budging. The Eagles are also getting power. We got an engine, huh? You ready for wings? You should see the beautiful view from underneath. Paul, go tip to the front. Oh, there it goes. There, uh, there perfect. You know, this is going to be really fun to fly. <laughs> <laughs> fly it? Who said anything about flying it? <laughs> You're going to lift, and I'll guide. The buzzards are getting their wings. Right. Uh, hang on, this one's in. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, looking good. Uh, hang on, no, stop. Just hang on, just think. It was all going so smoothly, but the ailerons are too long. Captain Bill has a solution. Well, don't worry, we'll just hack it off. Hey, we could put winglets on it. Hey. Ouais, ouais. Alors, vous me dites, eh? Wow, c'est génial. Well, racket. OK, c'est bon. The Falcon's wings slot into place perfectly. Ça, c'est la petite. Ça, c'est la moyenne et ça, c'est la grande. Looks good, looks very good. <laughs> Thanks. So could you paint me a kind of impressionist uh, image of uh, of the test day? We're on the we're in the desert. There's the three teams lined oh, up ready boy. to go. The American Eagles airplane will probably lift off the soonest. I think it'll break ground and be flying before anybody's ready. I well, feel hopefully the pilot will be ready. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's better be on the ball. And then I think that the uh, French Falcon team will be the second quickest to get off the ground, uh, mainly because it does have that high lift air curved airfoil, and it is fairly light. The British Buzzard's plane, being that it's a little bit heavier, will probably take off the slowest, but it could also be the fastest aircraft once it gets up and going. So, Jack, I've got to go ask the awful question. I know you don't like it, but who's your money on that? I, I think the American airplane looks the most like an authentic airplane. Logic out the window, emotion in the door. I'm going with the American team at the moment. So it's slightly port. Well, that's Spot. it. Okay, it's like. 15 minutes, chaps, that's all you've got. Hurry up, Run. hurry up. Well reps. Well reps, yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, six, seven, nine. Slowly. Yeah, steady. Super. Three, two, two one. one. Time is up. So. Yeah. It's over. British Buzzards jolly good show. Now it's time for a kip. Americans, the Eagle has landed. Yeah. Woo. French Falcon, s'il vous plaît, posez vos outils. Yeah. C'est la vie, yeah. c'est la fini. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, chaps. But Andrew, what about what about actually flying it now? A small amount of nerves, I would imagine. If something's going to happen, it's going to be something you can't plan for. You yeah. know, you can think about it all beforehand, and you'll think about it the night before, yeah. and you'll think about all that kind of stuff. But when it gets right down to it, it's just going to be, you know, open her up and yeah. let's go. This is the look of shock <laughs> and amazement. Wow, it's done. Is it done? Well, it's pretty much there. What about steering? Steering. Go, uh... <clears throat> okay. In the roll axis, yeah. we've got we've got ailerons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we've got elevators at the back. It should be a very controllable airplane. <laughs> this is an airplane. I can't believe it. You've got an airplane well, here. Get your ruddy pilot's license. You can fly it. How do you feel about flying? Yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> you look like... <laughs> you look a little delirious. <laughs> yes, sir. How long is she going to stay in the yeah, air? Yeah, well, depending on how much fuel we get on. <laughs> oh, really? We can cross the Atlantic and not the Channel now. <laughs> Go back to home. Ready for Atlantic Ocean. Good, yeah. good. The British Buzzard's biplane has double the wings of the other teams, but will Captain Bill's mishmash design with its long nose and heavy tail ever get off the ground? The American Eagles have a beautiful replica of a Walden 9 aircraft. But will this metal bird with large wings fly or just flap? The French Falcons finely carved Bolario may be a thing of beauty, but will it get their Gallic pride soaring? Join us after the break.
This TLC program is sponsored in part by Old Spice. Introducing new body wash from Old Spice. When I walk through a jam, no one knows who I am. Put my love to the test, and I miss the success. It has a dual action formula, so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey, Ben, need help with your anatomy homework? You! New body wash from Old Spice. Spice things up. You don't got. Check this out. Dodge Ram 1500. The Hemi legend continues. Hit it! Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. It takes strength to knock the daylights out of aging. Introducing Total Effects Night Firming Cream. It strengthens skin structure better than these leading department store products. Wake up to visibly firm skin. What is it? Uh, it's a magic business lamp. We got it in the merger. You rub it and the business genie grants you three wishes. Cut overhead. Increase efficiency. And improve service. Rub the lamp. Yeah, it's for you. It's the genie. Hi. Papa John's presents a mouth-watering deal that'll put a smile on your face. Say cheese. Sticks. Free cheese sticks. When you buy a made-to-order large one-topping Papa John's pizza for just $9.99, John himself will toss in our delicious cheese sticks absolutely free. We start with Papa John's hand-tossed dough, garlic sauce, cheese made with 100% mozzarella, and two zesty sauces for dipping. Call your neighborhood Papa John's today and get free cheese sticks when you order a large one-topping pizza for only $9.99. We see you smiling. Better ingredients. Better pizza. Papa John's. What if it were all true? Phone calls from the dead? Horrifying campus encounters? What if they were all lies? I'm Natasha Henstridge, and these are Urban Legends. Mostly true stories. Tuesday from 9 to 11, only on TLC. Do you want to make... Bodie Miller can become the first American in 20 years to capture the overall World Cup title. Go, Bodie, go! He's within striking distance of the current leader, Stefan Everharder, in the tightest battle on the mountain in years. Watch all the action here on OLN with Peter Young and two-time U.S. downhill champ Chad Fleischer in the studio and on the slopes, former Olympian Pam Fletcher. It's the FIS World Cup Finals this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern and Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Direct TV Channel 608. Your passport to suspense. I can't remember anything that happened before two weeks ago. Now playing on pay-per-view. Trained by the government. You've got a black ops agent who's off the reservation. Taught to disappear. I don't even know who I'm hiding from. I gotta figure this out. Born to survive. You! Stop right there! Now playing on pay-per-view. This is not gonna stop. Matt Damon is... Buckle up. Jason Bourne. The Bourne Identity with a bonus alternate ending not shown in theaters. Now playing on pay-per-view. New season of Junkyard Wars. The machines are taking over. Born of diesel and rust. Say hello to car dozers, dune buggies, laundry launchers. That's right, laundry launchers. Just a few of this season's mechanical marvels. Contraptions so crazy, we've given them their own series. Junkyard Wars, the new season. The competition begins Wednesday at 9, only on TLC. Welcome back to our Flight of Fantasy, where three teams are preparing for a race to the skies. Robert, I thought you said we were flying the planes at a lake. It's a dry lake, Tyler. A dry lake! We've brought our teams to the heart of the Mojave Desert in California. This dry lake bed should provide them with the ideal takeoff conditions but their fantasies of flight may still prove elusive. There's a lot to do before the planes are ready to fly, but they've only got two hours tinkering time before the wind gets up. I think, well, we can. We've got to get the engine finished. 
yeah, it is. Yeah. Their planes must also be inspected by the Federal Aviation Authority. If they're not deemed airworthy, they won't be allowed in the competition. Props locked. Safety is paramount. The teams must check that their engines start and run smoothly. Switches on. Switches on. Contact. Contact. Once in the air, any malfunction could prove fatal. The British may be feeling the wind in their hair, but things aren't quite so breezy for the Americans. Even engine expert Norm seems to be struggling. You call it. You call it, Norm. Too much fuel? I don't know. It makes me nervous. The French Falcons don't seem to have any problem. The Americans swallow their pride and call in British engine wizard Wendy. Yes, yeah, sure. She's their final hope. They've only got a few minutes of tinkering left. Very strange. So we'll just have a go. We have some more electrical connections, please. OK, try that. Wendy has saved the day. The American Eagles are back in the race. Go! Hey! That does it. Tinkering time is done. Jero, are you happy? OK? Everything OK? Bien sûr. On va y aller doucement. On va découvrir petit à petit le comportement de la machine. On va y aller tranquillement pour pas prendre de risques. Jero is our master, our boss. So we take uh, all the steps and verify everything. When you first leave the ground, what are you expecting? How are you expecting this plane to, to react? After about maybe 10 seconds, I will have a good idea of whether I think it's a flying machine or a brick. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll be able to act accordingly, really. Is this a tricky plane to fly? It could be tricky. It's, there's a very wide range of possibilities with it. One good thing about it is having built the airplane, you become in tune with it. And that's what helped a lot of people, the Wright brothers, their airplanes, some of their airplanes were very unstable and hard to fly, but they knew everything that they did on it, why they did it, and what they expected it to do, and building it helps you to fly it. Bill, David Swan. Oh, hello, David. It's now up to the pilots to convince David Swan, acting for the Federal Aviation Authority, that their planes are fit to fly. Could we walk around the yeah, aircraft? Yes, yes. His decision is final. I understand you had a fuel venting problem earlier, and that's been yeah, corrected. Yeah, it was siphoning out of the tank. Um, if any of the planes uh, fail to meet his strict safety criteria, they won't be allowed to take off. Noted your uh, brace wires. Yeah, in two directions, vertical and roughly horizontal. It's all wood and fabric. Yes, it's all wood and fabric. Yeah, we had considered uh, putting additional elevator surface back here, but when we got the front elevator done, the surface is uh, certainly adequate for any pitch control we'll need. Dual uh, tail skids. Right, just to prevent the bottom of the rudder from hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill, you have an interesting design. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to explain the features to me and let me look That's at right. the aircraft. On behalf of the FAA, I'd like to uh, present you with a certificate uh, so you can fly the aircraft. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's the first time in history that FAA flight certificates have been issued to planes made in 20 hours out of junk. Our international teams have permission to go head to head in the flight of the century. Wilbur, what is it, Orville? Are they going to fly those planes here? That's what they say. <laughs> sure don't look like Kitty Hawk to me. Where's the sea? They've got to be plum crazy to fly here. Plum crazy. To help us understand the fantastic achievements of the early flyers, we've invited along eminent aviation historian Josh Stoff. What's the ultimate goal if, if, if I'm Orville and Wilbur Wright? Obviously, it's to fly, but was it distance? Was it length? Or was it just simply just to get in the air? Well, certainly at, at first, it was just to get in the air. People didn't think that powered flight was possible. They said, man will never fly. If man were meant to fly, he'd have wings. And there were so many crackpots and tinkerers trying to fly, and they failed for many years so that when the airplanes first actually started flying, people couldn't believe what they were seeing. And it was like they were witnessing a miracle. People just were awestruck. It would almost be like today if someone could invent a machine that would make themselves invisible. Those early aviators, 1909, 1910 period, they achieved a popularity larger than any of today's sports stars or rock idols. I mean, aviators, their names were household words. You could just cannot picture a world without airplanes now, and, and we really have these early pioneers to thank. Whoa. 
It's unbelievable. This looks just like a 1910 airplane. You know, I just can't wait to see the fly. The American Eagles have a very powerful engine, so I, I would think that this thing is going to accelerate really well. Right. And as soon as it starts to accelerate and get a little speed, those two ailerons at the tips are going to fly up. I'm thinking this thing will be off the ground pretty fast. Let's go and have a look at the French Falcons. Monsieur Blairet au plein. Oui, oui, monsieur. Oui, oui. oui. <laughs> it's like a piece of furniture. Yeah. I was a little concerned that they didn't have enough movement in the rudder and the elevator, but it uh, looks like the French Falcons took that all into consideration. And all in all, this looks like an extremely well-proportioned, well-balanced airplane. Do you want to go and have a look at the British plane? Oh, let's have a go. <laughs> you still think this, this is going to be the slowest to take off? It certainly looks to be the heaviest. It's a little more contemporary looking to me, though, than a than the other two aircraft, more of a 1920s style airplane. So Chuck, now you've seen them all, they're all ready to go. Who's your money on now? In all honesty, I think I'm gonna have to go with the French. The inspections are over, the planes are ready. Tomorrow we'll see the greatest aviation challenge ever. We fly at first light when the wind is low and our hopes are high. <laughs> Junkyard Wars is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. Hello. <laughs> Steve? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Dude, are you still getting coffee? <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, seriously. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my, that's a pig drinking cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. T-Mobile camera phones. Get more. Nothing performs like the BMW 3 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Okay, this is our trash. I got the trash. I'll be right back. Uh-huh. Don cleans through grease faster, so you finish faster. So get Don and get done. Okay, people. Here at Arby's, we roast our beef in ovens, right in the store so it's fresh. Juicy, not greasy, which means we have to respect the ovens and the oven mitt. So, we don't want to repeat it yesterday now, do we? Oh! Oh! Get it off! It's heavy! Ow! Oh. Got it? Try the oven goodness of Arby's new Italian beef and provolone with beef marinated and Italian seasonings. What are you eating today? Hey, yo, Method Man and Red Man here to show you how Power Strike from Right Guard Extreme works. Stop this strike with extra older fighters. Let's pretend this huge elastic band is the Power Strike, and these guys are older. Let's see what happens when older meets the Power Strike. <laughs> see, it repels it for a new level of protection. <laughs> Goes on clear, doesn't quit. <laughs> Get more stream. Get the power strike, dude. The Science Channel. Finding science everywhere. <laughs> Understand the science that's all around us. Turn on the Science Channel. It's the new 24-hour network now available on digital cable and satellite. To get the Science Channel, call your cable or satellite provider. Friday on While You Were Out, this castaway turns a boring backyard into an island oasis. But will her cousin survive the surprise? That's so sneaky! <laughs> I know. Then, while he's away having fun in the sun, she brings a bit of the inside to the outside by creating a colorful casita. Look what we did while you were yeah. gone. Don't miss the fun on back-to-back -back episodes of While You Are Out. Friday at 8, only on TLC. On the next Faking It. Peace is here. A regular Joe from Chicago. I guess you would call me the typical beer drinker. Says goodbye to his basement yeah. sports bar and hello to the wine cellar yeah, to fake it as a sommelier. I never heard of a sommelier. I thought it was a country in Africa. But can this beer buff really convince experts he knows about wine? Oh, you got it. He's like a 
you know, we're going to have a really hard time. Find out in TLC's new series, Faking It, Friday at 10 on TLC. What can Brown do to you? Jesse does not want Brown. I hate Brown. I told you. Ah! It's a design smackdown. Back-to-back -back trading spaces, Saturday at 8, only on TLC. Ladies and gentlemen, we are next in line for takeoff. Please make sure that your seats are fully forward, your trays are in the upright position, and your seat belts are fastened. Enjoy your flight. Sunrise, the Mojave Desert. Our intrepid teams are preparing for one of the most daring aviation challenges ever witnessed. The teams will have to fly a half mile from the start line on one side of the lake to the finish line on the other. It may sound easy, but remember, these planes are made from junk and modeled on designs from a hundred years ago. Flying such contraptions is so dangerous that we're insisting on one test flight each before the competition even starts. The pilots' lives could be on the line. There hasn't been one of these flown since 1911, so nobody's around that ever saw one fly, so, uh, or ever flew one, and there's nothing written about what it flew like when it was in 1911. American Eagles, you are clear to take off. Okay, let's do it, here we go. Everyone is on pins and needles. Anything could happen. Well, what's the mood over there? We just want to get one good, safe flight, nice and straight. Our airplane is a little more unconventional. He's rolling, he's okay. rolling. If Andrew can get the nose off the ground, the rest of the plane should follow. Come on, baby, get up there, get up there. He's desperately hoping for some lift, but there seems to be a technical problem. He's going very fast. He's got one He's wheel off the side, isn't he? Yeah. He's completely off balance. He's starting to do what's known as a wheelbarrow. Keep control, Andrew. There may be a problem with the center of gravity being right. too far forward. What was the problem? Now we gotta go talk to Andrew and see. All right, what's happened? I think we need a few adjustments. That was a little bit disappointing, I have to say, because I was really looking forward to seeing that go in the air. So our center of gravity is a little far forward, and so that's not helping us. You know, we're a little disappointed, but it's stuff we can work on and try to make it better, and we'll see what happens. Okay, French Vulcans, please get ready to take off. Very confident? Um. <clears throat> Yes, more or less confident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a little bit of uh, trepidation bit, there. Yeah, we are a bit tense anyway. Yeah. Pilot Eric is concentrating on the only thing that matters, his own safety. The fastidious French Falcons are taking it slow and steady. Now, there's got to be scary sitting inside oh, of yeah, you, yeah, It's yeah. the first time it's moved under its own power, isn't it? Yeah. At 330 pounds, the Blario is by far the lightest of the three planes. But will it fly? I think everybody's heart rate has just gone yeah. up about three or four notches here. It turns without any difficulty, so all seems to be OK. They're having problems with their balance, too. Oh, he's a bit sideways, but he's... Oh, oh, oh. He's yawing a bit there, yeah. isn't he? Oh. OK, correction. OK. Allez. Lève -le. Up. He's in the air. Fantastic. And he's safely down. Ah, OK. Yeah. Right. OK. Remember, this is only the test flight. He's taking a very technical approach to the first flight. So time to go in and find out what he thinks? I think, I I think, think Eric looks the, happy. The test has gone quite well so far, yeah. So what were you doing there? Just a little hop to, to check that the wings were correctly balanced. Très bien, très bien. Nothing to oh, add, you know? I love it. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. British buzzards, prepare for your first flight. Bill. All systems go, any last minute concerns or anything? Uh, you get to this stage, we've done all the pre-flight checks, we've prepared everything. Uh, I just want to get on with it. It feels yeah. like being on a high diving board waiting to go. <laughs> and you know, all your senses are really sharp and you know, you're just focused. Switches on, contact, contact. Go! 
blocks away. Okay, let's go. He started taxiing. Oh, oh, and he's in the air. Yes. Wow, what is he doing? This is meant to be a test flight. More speed. He's got it. It's an amazing sight. No, wow, he's... look at that. That is amazing. It's just up. He's just flying. Captain Bill is really pushing his luck. As you guys see it kind of cruise by, I mean, you yeah. kind of go, oh, we made that. <laughs> you know, a little bit of pangs of pride. I'm going to cry. This is amazing. He's flying nearly 500 pounds of junk at over 200 feet. I mean, this is one heck of a test flight. I had a suspicion once he got in the air, that guy's not going to come ah. down for a while. Uh, I knew they would fly, but this is beyond what I expected for the there first go. flight. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, Here Bill. Put it on the ground Get it gently. Right Landing is going to be tricky. Bill has only one wheel. If he topples over, the plane could smash to pieces. Bravo! Oh, what a beautiful oh, landing. One wheel, beautiful. What a beautiful. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Maestro, well done. It flies, it flies, it well, flies like a dream. There you go. Remember, these were only the test flights. The American Eagles got up to speed, but not off the ground. There's a problem with the balance of their plane. The British buzzards threw caution to the wind and soared to dizzying heights in their brilliant biplane. The French Falcons made one small hop in a technically perfect test run. But disaster has struck. You're looking at this propeller. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's dead. Look at this split here. There's a split oh from here to this point, maybe on both sides. You know, it's, it goes through all along here. So you can't have anything like that, or it's it's not gonna. It's if you lose fly. a part of that, you go to a crash. Yeah. Unless the Falcons can patch their prop, they won't be allowed to fly. Join us after the break. This TLC program is sponsored in part by The Neighborhood, built by MCI. Let's say one phone company provides you long distance and a completely different one has your local service. Now, you probably pay too much for both of them, but you let it slide until you discover that with The Neighborhood, you can get unlimited local and long distance together for one low monthly price. And just for good measure, extras like caller ID are included. Call 1-800-JOIN-MCI today. The Neighborhood where local and long distance come together. Over a million have joined. How about you? Achoo. Looking for better allergy relief? Benadryl is proven better than the leading prescription allergy medicine at relieving your worst allergy symptoms, like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. Benadryl, proven more effective. Did you, madam, proceed to wear this shirt, knowing full well that your neighbor had already received this title? Well... well Indeed, your witness. Your Honor, I have only one thing to present in defense of my client, the Dodge Caravan. Proving once again, Dodge Caravan is the choice of great moms everywhere. I told you we should have settled. Hit it! Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. Even though Olay Complete is loaded with sheer moisture, vitamins E and C, and UVA, UVB sun protection, it feels surprisingly lighter than other leading UV moisturizers. So lighten up with Olay Complete. What is it? Pixie dust. Pixie dust. Pixie, Pixie dust? dust? Magic self-healing server Pixie dust. How does it work? Server goes down, sprinkle on the Pixie dust, servers back up. Use it regularly and servers solve their own problems. Easy. I like it. What's it cost? It's cheap. Cheap. Soy based. Soy based. Biodegradable. Looks like we got a winner. What makes an urban legend? 
Does it have to scare you? Does it have to be true? Don't believe everything you see. There's no denying the power of the urban legend. Phone calls from the dead, a dress with a vicious curse. Join me, Natasha Henstridge, as we tell you what to believe. Skeptical? Don't be. Mostly true stories, urban legends revealed. Tuesday from 9 to 11, only on TLC. Now there's one. Here you go. You just programmed your new digital video recorder. So now I can watch all my favorite shows whenever I want? Yes, sir. So if I just walk out the door right now, it'll record? Automatically. I'm stepping towards the door, and I'm not missing a thing. Right. It's prime time, and I'm leaving the house. I am now on the porch. Introducing DirecTV Digital Video Recording. Now you can watch what you want, when you want to watch it. Visit these retailers for a demo today. Welcome back, where things are hotting up, but the pilots are staying cool. Well, we'll do whatever we have to do. The Americans are determined to beat the competition, but unless they can get their aircraft balanced, it'll be push-off rather than take-off. They're adding lead weight to their tail. If the French Falcons want to fly again, they must administer first aid to their split propeller. They have to get busy and get cracking on it yeah. so the glue has time to dry. Yeah. But glue alone won't hold it together. The British have come to the rescue. Buzzard Ian is an experienced propeller doctor. It's a delicate operation. In the interest of safety, the judge is insisting that all teams make a second test flight. American Eagles, please come forward for your second flight. OK, American Eagles, how are things over here? Lousy so far. What, is, what, <laughs> what have you changed since the last run? We uh, put a little more weight in the back, and uh, we twisted that wing down just a little bit because it was trying to lift the right wing up. That's about it. Will the lead weight do the trick? Come on, Andrew. Get her up there. Let's go, Andy. Andrew. Any second, we should see the nose come off if their adjustments have been successful. It's got flutter. It's got flutter of something. Whoa, there's a serious problem with their wings. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Why is that right wing coming up? I was really kind of surprised that I didn't see the nose wheel come yes, off. Yes, I thought, I thought I, that's really what I expected to see. They give you a little scare? They have some more adjusting to they do, do if they're they going to get this thing off the ground. Andrew, yes. what happened out there? I don't think the front nose wheel ever came off the ground. Frustrated? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Now you've had two, two goes at it. What needs to be done to get this plane? I don't know. We all scratch our heads and try to think of something. French Falcons, please move forward for your second flight. French Falcons, ça va? Falcons pilot Eric knows his propeller will be spinning at 5,500 revolutions per minute. It's only held together by string and glue. He's getting flat out. Yeah, he's adding a bit more power now. I see oh, the, the tail. There it goes. Tail very good. Eric's fate is tied to the blades of that propeller. I think he's off. He's, he's off. He's, he's off. He's, he's off. Yeah. He's off. Yes. What a fantastic flight! Yeah. <laughs> and now for the landing, one of the most dangerous moments for both the pilot and the aircraft. On his second test run, Eric stayed in the air for an amazing 25 seconds. Some bizarre cheers going on there, the French team. Yeah, Superbe. Bravo, monsieur. Well done. 
Well, so it looks really, really good. Very stable. Yes, it there. is. It's, it's just great. British buzzards, please move forward for your second flight. Captain Bill wastes no time getting airborne. He's getting used to the airplane. He's getting a feel of it and just seeing how she's going. Bill's pushing his plane to the limit. The one thing that I was a little concerned about was the weight of the airplane, but the biplane configuration has given them a good light uh, wing loading so they can fly. The four wings are definitely sending the buzzard soaring, but this is still only a test flight. If anything goes wrong at this height, the results would be disastrous. No. Bring it down. <laughs> Bring it down. <laughs> He's coming into land, but with only one wheel, he's relying on the ailerons to keep the plane balanced. He's caught a crosswind. Oh, bit of a bounce then. Yeah. Well, 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 well. <laughs> wow, that was close. The British buzzers really set the standard. The French Falcons are running a very close second, uh, and the American Eagle team has got a, some ground to gain. The test flights are over. Next, the real challenge. Captain Bill may be lord of the skies, but will his one-wheeled biplane hold together for one more flight? The French Falcons have a beautifully trimmed plane, but their propeller is only held together with string and glue. The American Eagles have yet to get their three wheels off the ground. But Captain Ken is hoping they've finally got their plane balanced. It's not over till it's over. Join us after the break. Doctors recommend elevating your heart rate at least 30 minutes a day. Here's to your health. The BMW 3 Series. The ultimate driving machine. Okay, I admit, time to get another roast out of the. Look, it's Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. Whoa, 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 whoa. The oven goodness of beef, roasted right in the store so it's juicy, not greasy, then marinated in Italian seasonings on a soft baguette. Canta. Okay, okay, I'll stop. Try Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. What are you eating today? Mrs. Mark. Hi, honey. Hey, what's up? Do you know where your clippers are? Uh, I don't know. In the garage? Uh-uh. I'm, I'm in a meeting now. Can we do it in a toolbox, maybe? Uh, no. The closet. Oh, no, Landon? Uh-huh. Uh, is he all right? Uh, yeah. Dad? Oi. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. T-Mobile camera phones. Get more. What is it? This is a business reality detector. It sniffs out overpromises and exaggerations. Does it work? Try it. Keeney, what's up with the supply chain overhaul? Everything's on schedule. Fuller, how's the wireless thing going? Under budget. Bill, what do you think? I don't think. I'm just a yes man. It works. Going to 12 rounds is all about stamina. That's why I like high endurance from Old Spice. No deodorant protects better. And it lasts longer because it evaporates more slowly. Want proof? If you're not convinced, Old Spice will buy you a stick of your old stuff. Let me put it this way. High endurance lasts longer than I do. I'm working on that. The all-new season of Junkyard Wars is getting fired up with a brand new set of solid steel struggles. Get your junk on with Dune Buggies, Beach Rescue, and Golf. Well, off-road golf. Just a few of this season's mechanical marvels. Contraptions so crazy, we've given them their own series. Junkyard Wars, the new season. The competition begins Wednesday at 9, only on TLC. This castaway turns a boring backyard into an island oasis. 
Then, while he's having fun in the sun, she has a little fun of her own, creating a colorful casita. It's back-to-back -back episodes of While You Were Out, Friday at 8, only on TLC. Welcome back, where it's still up and down in our race to the finish. The test flights are over. It's race time. The course will be a half-mile run from the red start line on one side of the lake to a red finish line on the other. The winner will be the pilot who lands and comes to a full stop closest to this red line. If no pilot gets near the red line, the winner will be the team with the longest time in the air. These are tense and nervous times for the pilots. The American Eagles have made their wings more rigid and added weight to the back of their aircraft. Captain Ken's hoping this will get them airborne. French Falcon's pilot Eric has to contend with a split propeller. If the string and glue fail to hold it together, he could come crashing back down to Earth. I'm getting vibration affected uh, instrument readings, yeah. so I'm just going to disregard the instruments and fly by the seat of my pants. British buzzard Bill's test flights were hugely successful, but with no instruments, he may not be in for happy landings. Right, where's my gloves? American Eagles, are you ready? Pilot Andrew and the Walden monoplane are first up. They've done some adjustments. What have what they changed? The American Eagle airplane had one wing lifting stronger than the other wing, so they made some adjustments to the wire rigging to try to get some balance in, in the way the wings are lifting so that they both lift at the same rate. It is your last chance. Are you going to be able to do this? Are you going to get it off the ground, stop on the red line, do what you came here to do? Well, how about if I do like two of those three or four things? <laughs> Which <laughs> how two? How about if we settle for one, just get it off the ground. We'll get it back on the ground. Red line, we'll see what we can do, but... Okay. Let's go. Your head. Even experienced pilot Andrew is feeling the pressure. Looking good. This plane last flew in 1911. Come on, Andrew, get it up there, get it up. Wow, there goes the front wheel. Wow. Oh, 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 oh he got it on. Yes. There it is, there it is. It's up. It's up. It's up. Yeah. Go, Andrew. Go, 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 go. Spurred on by his teammates, Andrew keeps going and going and going. He's still flying. He's still flying. Go, Andrew. It's an incredible flight. Tangling and boring! 500 pounds of steel just floating across the desert. I don't even have to ask you, how do you feel about that? Oh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's a relief. Yeah, amazing. Well, that's quite a long flight. That's a long flight. He's landing nowhere near the red line, but he flew for a record one minute, four seconds. I'm getting pretty discouraged there, but uh, things are looking a little better now. Yeah. A triumphant Andrew taxis back to the start line. Stop. <laughs> Can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, Woo. well done, sir. Thank How you. did it fly? Thank How, you. Did, How, did, it How fly? did it uh It how sucks. Did it handle? <laughs> That's the 96 different type of airplane I've flown, and it's probably the worst flying one of the bunch. <laughs> what about the red line? The elevator, as it moves up and down, it blocks a lot of your forward view. You know, you can see the mountains up above and stuff right in front of you, but you can't see much, you know, in your normal field of vision. So uh, I was just like, well, I'm just going to keep going then as long as I can. It was an incredibly successful first flight, making the Americans the ones to beat. French Falcons, êtes-vous prêts? There's everything to play for. Falcons pilot Eric must stop as close to the finish line as possible or beat the American time of one minute, four seconds. It's a bit windy, but it looks good. Will their string-bound propeller give them the power they need? Oh, he's up. He's up. He's up. Wow! Oh, oh. Oh. 
back down. Oh, he landed right there. Yeah. He'll puff the dust. Allez, Tchalo! Allez, Tchalo! Allez, Tchalo! He's heading straight for the red finishing line, but he's got no brakes, so stopping could be difficult. He's just over the line. Brilliant! Hey! Dimitri, how do you feel about this? All of your hard work has done very, very well. Yeah, it flies well. good and pretty. So, what can we do? What else? Oh, what else? Yeah. Well, you just need a, we're just missing a second seat for you. It was a beautiful flight from the French. Although they touched down halfway through their 28 second journey, Eric stopped right on the finish line. That gives the French the lead with the Americans in second place. British buzzards, are you ready? You're going to fly a half mile and then try to stop fully as close to the red line as you can. There are no brakes, so it's a little harder than, uh, than we could have made it for ourselves. Uh, but let's face it, it isn't that sophisticated, is it? Contact! British pride is at stake. The French have already got their tail on the red line, and Bill's going to have to do better than that. He just flies right up. He just up and it climbs really yeah. well, doesn't it? That's the highest he's been to date, yeah. I think. The buzzard's one-wheeled wonder soars again to dizzying heights. Look at him, it's just, it's steady it's as a rock. It's it? Yeah. Here's he's coming back around here and he's going to head for the Red Ribbon. He's quite hard because he's got no brakes, has he? He's no, he is. He's going to judge it pretty good. Yeah, it's going to be very good, good judgment. It's all down to Bill landing safely and coming to a dead stop at the red line. Wow! Keep going. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right onto the line. That was under the line. Very nice. <laughs> Amazing, you nailed the red line. Indeed. Bill, bravo, much. bravo. I couldn't have done it without these splendid people. So, the American Eagles never saw the finish line, but flew for an incredible one minute, four seconds. The French Falcons stopped on the finish line, but touched down halfway through their 28 second flight. And the British buzzards pinned the finish line with their nose wheel and flew for an astounding two minutes and 40 seconds. So over to the judge for the official verdict. I have to, I have to declare the British buzzards are the winners. Are the winners. They are the winners. All the hard work that you guys have all put in, I mean, to see, uh, that, to see that it works. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. This lovely little airplane. It, it is. I mean, look at your... built it in two days. <laughs> When I read a history book now, yeah. and they talk about flying these things, yeah. I'll know a lot more about what they mean than I did before. Moi, je dirais que on a un tout petit peu revécu l'époque, cette époque qui pour nous, qui est pour nous l'histoire, l'époque des pionniers. On a un tout petit peu goûté à, à ça, et pour nous, c'était un rêve. Ladies and gentlemen, after the most fantastic day of aeronautic engineering, bravery and skill, please, first of all, the American Eagles for the most authentic historical plane. And now the team who made the most beautiful airplane anyone has ever made in 20 hours, the French Falcons. And now last, but by no means least, the high-flying British Buzzards! Right. Pilot extraordinaire, Bill! I have this for you, sir. Right. Champagne! Right. And this, Bill, is to prove that the British Buzzards are the winners!
amazing treasure is all around us, from ocean depths to desert sands. But finding it is a challenge that can drive the search to the four corners of the Earth. Hi, I'm Eric Close. 